Friend, please accept what I'm about to tell you at face value. I have a master's degree in diplomacy and international terrorism from a military school, Norwich University, a very old and prestigious school. And much of my study was on Islam and Islamic terrorism. You can see a lot of my research at our website. My bachelor's degree is from the State University of New York in communications. I have been in the broadcast industry since the late 1980s. In addition to all of my activist work and writing books, etc., I've been in radio and or television for the better part of a quarter century. And I've been a guest on 60 Minutes, Oprah, Donahue. I've been interviewed by Dan Rather. So I understand the communications industry. And I'm in, in many ways, I'm an insider. And so I'm going to talk to you about what President Obama did yesterday. And I'm going to let you know right up front that it was despicable. The president's response and how they set this up was despicable. And it was designed for something. I'm going to play the clip right now. And you watch and you listen and let your mind, you know, try and engage and say, well, what's going on here? And then we'll talk about it. All right, here's the clip. France is one of our oldest allies, our strongest allies. They have been with us at every moment when we, from 9-11 on, in dealing with some of the terrorist organizations around the world that threaten us. For us to see the kind of cowardly, evil attacks that took place today, I think, reinforces once again why it's so important for us to stand in solidarity with them, just as they stand in solidarity with us. Uh, the fact that this was an attack on journalists, an attack on our free press, also underscores the degree to which these terrorists fear freedom. All right. When the attack took place, they had the podium set up, and they said the president's about to come and make a comment. Well, he never came. They put it off for a long time. And then they gave us this. You can barely hear it. Now, now, mind you, why is that important? Because for the president to be on television and to have those images played all over the world sends a message to Islamic terrorists. The president of the United States did not want clips of him condemning Islamic terrorism played around the United States. So they set Joe Biden and him in this room where they know that the audio is horrible. They know that there's going to be cameras clicking, hundreds of click, 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 click. You, you can't even, you can barely hear what he's saying. All right, so that's number one. Number two, it was drivel. <laughs> France is an old ally. And this strengthens our resolve. And blah, blah. Look at what he didn't say. He didn't say Islam one time, did not say Islamic terrorism, did not say Muslim terrorists. There's nothing in his words that could be taken out and then sent as a challenge to Muslim terrorists anywhere in the world. Nothing. And then his, his line, this shows how much they hate freedom. They don't hate freedom. They don't hate freedom. This was an attack that was about avenging Mohammed. Here, I want you to see some of these cartoons, right? I don't speak French, but here's some of the cartoons that the newspaper ran. We are running them on this television show because we have a duty before God and man to resist this evil the blight of true, ancient, orthodox Islam, all right? This nonsense about moderate Islam versus radical Islam, these are not distinctions that the Islamic world makes. This is a creation. These words are a creation of the West to try and grapple with how do we deal with this religion, this philosophical blueprint 
But the Muslims don't have moderate Muslims versus devout Muslims or orthodox or violent. It's Islam, people. It's Islam. And the president of the United States, this cowardly, cowardly man who has already bowed to the king of Saudi Arabia. Remember that picture? There he is. He's got an affinity with the Muslim world. <clears throat> I don't fully understand it. it. Might be from his childhood, might be from his dad. I don't know. It really doesn't matter. What matters is that he is not defining the enemy. He is not confronting the enemy. And he is not truly standing in solidarity with the French and with this newspaper. I'll continue explaining what I mean when we come back from this break. Please stay with me. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're going to get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what? 16, 18 years old. Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah? Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be. 